Good morning to each and every one of you once again this Sunday morning when we are meeting online and not at the church. Let us all get our Bibles. We're going to read a chapter from the book of Psalms. From Psalms chapter 1, from verse 1 till verse 6. This is an awesome, amazing book which God has given us. 150 chapters starts with this psalm. It will show how God wants us to know how to prosper and how to succeed in life. So let us all get our Bibles and can join along and read wherever you might be. Read as loud as you can from verse 1, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 till 6, the end of the chapter. All together, let us start. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Thank you. Praise be unto God this morning. It is good to connect with each other no matter what the situation would be in the world. We've got to know that His word is true, His promises are true, and God will lead and guide each and every one of you. He knows each and every one of you by name. He knows all the things that you're going through. He's waiting for you to call on Him. And as you call on Him, and as you wait for Him, and as you press on, things will start happening in the positive, and God will strengthen he will send his power into each and every one of your life. 1947, a wonderful incident took place in the region of Israel, in what is the occupied Palestinian territory in the West Bank. A Bedouin shepherd who lost his goat was looking in this dry region around the Dead Sea. And there he could see that there are a lot of caves and so not wanting to climb up and go in and see if the goat was inside he picked up some stones and he threw it inside that cave hoping that maybe his goat which had gone inside would come out but instead of an animal coming out he heard some pottery breaking inside and so he ran inside to see what had taken place and there he could find some clay pots and inside those were scrolls and there were other parchments and other pieces of written script. So he looked at all that was there. He took just a few of the good ones, thinking that he'll give him a lot of money. He went to one of the people there who would sell it for him. And that man took it to an archbishop of the church who was able to look at it and see that it was written in Hebrew. And that was one of the greatest discoveries in the Christian world in the last century. Immediately, many people went and started looking at all the caves and they were able to find many such parchments and many such scrolls and they identified among all the caves that were there, 11 caves which contained nearly 1,100 ancient documents which included several scrolls and more than 100,000 fragments. These fragments had material written, had script written, had verses written from every Old Testament book except the book of Esther. They even had books that were not part of the Bible, a lot of other manuals that were their commentaries, theological texts, and all of that mostly was written in Hebrew, but some were written in Aramaic and Greek. This changed the entire perception in the Christian world and shut down the voices of those who were skeptics who doubted the Bible because up until this time 
there were many who wanted to cancel the Bible, the word of God saying, this is just a fable, none of this could have taken place. It was all written up by very creative authors. None of this would have even been possible more than 1,500 years ago. But they were all proved wrong because they could find that these texts were really old. Some of it was older than even the time of Jesus by even around 250 BC. Because till that point, it was the mesoteric text that was used to get the Christian Bible and the Masoretes were the ones who were the Jewish scholars who were from 580 to 950 AD were writing it on their own hands and passing it down and when they found this it also caused a little bit of anxiousness among the Christian scholars because they're wondering now this text which is more than 2000 years ago will it match the Bible that we have right now will it match this mesoteric text maybe they would have modified something and maybe some things would be different but when they studied it for years they found that this 2000 plus year old parchments and scrolls were almost identical to the bible that we now have there were hardly any difference the message was the same certain books were completely there as a whole piece like the book of Isaiah and the book of Daniel you can look at all those details if you're really interested there's so much to see it'll take a long time for you to see all the books and the scrolls and the parchments that were found and look at it in detail a Hebrew scholar by the name of Miller Burroughs writes and says it is a matter of wonder that through something like this 1000 years the text underwent so little alteration as I said in my first article on the scroll, herein lies its chief importance, supporting the fidelity of the mesoteric tradition. We were able to see that these Jewish scribes were so committed that they wrote word for word and they checked it. And that's how they were able to ensure that the word of God never altered and changed. I want to tell you the Bible is a true living word of God. And all that he has said will come true it is not something that is thought of by some imaginary or people who are very creative all these things took place there are many other references many other artifacts much evidence can be found archaeological evidences are available to prove these things took place the nations around and the kings around have written about all that took place in israel and the nation israel so Look at the word of God, read it, let it bless you. I want to tell you in the midst of all the things that are going place on this world, especially in this nation at this time, where almost everyone is shaken up, looking at all the things that are happening in the past few weeks, I would say things like this have hardly taken place in this nation. Definitely not in the lifetime of the people who've lived here, even during times of war. I do not know if death took place in this large scale. Almost all the states and almost all the cities that are there and people are really affected by it. At times like this, there are a lot of questions that would rise up. Even among Christians, even among those who believe in God and believe in His word, you can be shaken up unless you're really rooted and grounded. You'd have doubts about all the things that you thought were stable and were sure and you would be finding it hard to hold on and hard to keep a steady mind and a strong heart in this time when there is a terrible shaking that is taking place I want to let you know that there is a place that is why I come this morning to tell you to carry this message from God who has confirmed it on Sunday even got me up last morning and I do not know what time it was all I can know is that it was very dark in the night and he, I heard it very clearly God saying that the people of God the people of the world need to know that there is a place that there is a life and there is a way and you have got to find it you've got to know how to go there and you've got to be in that place you have got to be on that path and you've got to have that life 
for these are the days those who are not in this particular place that the word of god reveals to us those who are not in this particular path this particular way they will be shaken up the bible tells about how there are blessings when we do certain things like psalm 34 verse 8 it says oh taste and see the lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him so when you trust in god it is a blessed life that you're leading because you will have no doubt you can be happy and you can be peaceful and you can have joy revelation chapter 24 verse 14 says blessed are those who do his commands for then they will have the right to the tree of life and they will enter to, into the gates into that city acts chapter 20 verse 35 tells about what jesus himself said paul writes and says about the words of jesus christ where he says it is more blessed to give than to receive oh this is a time for you to give to people in your life look around there are people with need you can give them financial help you can give them your physical support you can speak to them and you can comfort them i heard about a wonderful thing that took place in the city of mumbai there was a man who could see that people were affected because of the lack of oxygen cylinders that were needed because of the coronavirus affecting the breathing of the people who were infected by it so he sold his ford endeavor for around 22 lakhs and he took that money and he went and bought oxygen cylinders and he gave it to people who are wanted he's even set up a call center so that people can call him and he's willing to help and he's helped hundreds of people isn't it a wonderful act that he has done he knew though he is not in the way that god is speaking about but he knew somehow that it is more blessed to give than to receive when people who are not in the way people who are not following the lord jesus christ can do this each and every one of you who serve the lord who follow him you got to know how to give for giving shows that you've understood god for god sent his only son he gave him for each and every one of us and we've got to give even at this time give as much as you can to those in need and bless them let the love of christ motivate you and lead you do something do not be silent do not be afraid get somebody and help them go feed somebody call up somebody and offer your help do not let people struggle on their own you got to get into their life and you can send things to them so that they will know that they will be able to get hope that they will feel the love of god that they can have joy and peace that you also have the bible in this passage that we read this morning in psalm chapter 1 tells about three things that we should not do which is something that will turn into a blessing blessing is not just in doing certain things but to lead a blessed life is also to not do certain things the first thing that is mentioned here is in psalm chapter 1 verse 1 where you're instructed to walk not walk not in the counsel of the ungodly it means that you got to reject the advice of evil people you got to reject the advice of the morally wrong and the wicked not just at this time all through your life when you are living your life people will come and they will suddenly give their counsel what they do they want you to do and if that advice is evil and if it is morally wrong and it is not according to the word of god and it makes you break the commandments of god then you've got to reject it just because they are friends just because you're in connection with them doesn't mean that you've got to immediately accept it and do it so that you'll be accepted that is something that will turn out very dangerous and you will lose your joy your peace and you will not be in that blessed state the bible tells about the people who would do such things in the book of proverbs chapter 9 verse 13 onwards where it tells about this particular person 
here it tells about a foolish woman it could also be a man it says a foolish woman is clamorous these are the people who make a lot of noise they talk a lot and they go around telling to many people what they need to do that's what it's telling about here a foolish woman is clamorous she is simple and knows nothing for she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city so she's not just sitting in the door of her house but she's also in higher positions so it means that there are people not just in one particular area who can come and give you wrong advice and counsel but they can be in the various places in life high up in places of power and positions of authority in places that are highly esteemed and what does such a person who's foolish who does not know the truth who does not live morally who does not live in a correct fashion say they'll call they'll beckon they'll call those who pass by these are the innocent people who have not really thought about things and they are actually going in their own life it says who go straight on their way so she'll call them disturb them and this person it could be a male or a female and they will say whoever is simple let him turn in here and as for him who act lacks understanding she says to him stolen water is sweet bread eaten in secret is pleasant yes there are many who would find great pleasure in doing things that are wrong and they might even boast about it and here she is she is putting herself at great risk because she is obviously here stolen something and doing something that is not right she knows it is not right but she still enjoys it she's gone to the point where she says that which is stolen that which is wrong is sweet and if you listen to her and you get inquisitive and curious and you want to try it out if you listen to that person it's a male or a female you can get yourself in trouble they know that it has to be done in a secret place and that is why they sit in here bread eaten in secret because they cannot do it out in the open because the people will find them out it might be illegal it might be unlawful the things that they are doing and they know it but they say it is sweet it is pleasant if you listen to such advice what will happen the next verse 18 prov chapter 9 it says but he does not know that the death that the dead are there that a guess are in the depths of hell that's what happens when you go down this path death will what happen in the end and that those who become close to her and accepted her invitation accepted this man or woman's invitation will finally end up in hell so do not accept walk not in the counsel of the ungodly the second thing this psalm tells us is stand not in the path of sinners do not follow the example of those who are living a sinful life reject the lifestyle of sinners they might put it out for the world to see they might say i am doing this and i am enjoying it they might take photos and selfies and they might flash it across all over the internet for people to see but if it is not right do not follow their example do not be affected by it that you want to do it reject such a lifestyle and if you reject it then you will be blessed the third thing this psalm tells is sit not in the seat of the scornful do not join those who have no use for god they are the mockers they are the ones who scorn the counsel of god the word of god they are ones who scorn and mock the moral laws of god the commandments of god they will laugh at it they will say oh why should we follow it we'll do whatever we want we like it we enjoy it and therefore we will do it but the instructions are clear if you want to lead a blessed life reject the counsel of the ungodly reject the lifestyle of sinners reject the companies of those who mock god 
those who hate God, those who enjoy doing things which are against the will and plan of God. We've got to keep ourselves safe, especially at this time, and keep our blessing because when you do that, you'll be able to see in this psalm the things that will take place. Your eyes, your focus should not be on those who are ungodly, on those who are sinners, on those who are scornful and those who are mockers. But your eyes and your focus should be on the law of God, on the word of God. That's what verse 2 of this psalm says. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seed of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. It doesn't mean that he just delights himself in just knowing the law of God. The first part of this verse too. It means that he delight, delights in doing what the law of God says. Not just in knowing it. Not just in saying, oh, that is good. That is wonderful. And he does it. And how is he able to do it? He or she will be able to do it when they meditate on the law of God day and night. They have got their eyes set on the word of God. They are reading it at all times so that they will get to know the secrets of the kingdom for success. So that they will know that God who has revealed wonderful things unto men is a God who will reveal to them. Therefore, they are dedicating their time so that they will be able to receive from him words of counsel. God will be the one who will give them counsel. God will be the one who will show them the lifestyle that they should lead. God will be the one who will be their friend and their companion. They do not look for company among people who are not on the right side of the law. They do not look for the counsel of those who are walking in the wrong path. They do not look for the lifestyle so that they can follow of those who are not living right. You've got to base your life on the teachings of Jesus Christ and on his word. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Especially in this time, in these days, you've got to be like a house that is built on a rock, having a strong firm foundation when you live your life based on the word of God then your life will not crumble at times like this your mind will have the mind of Christ your heart will get its strength from God physically you will get the protection of God and you will get the power so that you can be healed and transformed and strengthened for when situations like this that are taking place right now comes. It is like the rain that came. It is like the floods that lifted up the water level and it washed away many things and the winds that blew and they were not just something that was light. The rain and the floods and the wind it says beat on that house. It was almost like as if they want to check the firmness of that structure. It was as if the rain and the floods and the winds were trying to see if this house could be shaken and moved. That's why they were beating on that house. But because this house was built on the rock, it did not fall. But Jesus tells about those who hear the sayings. Even this morning, if you are hearing this maybe for the first time or someone asks you to listen to this and if you reject it, the word of God, then Matthew chapter 27 was 20. Matthew chapter 7 verse 26 it says whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great 
what's it for? If you do not have a Bible, get a Bible and read it, for in it is a counsel of God. I brought this morning the Bible that I used to read many years ago. It is quite big and it is something that is quite heavy. I had this for many years and I've read it through and through and so many times so many of these books I do not know how if you can see from there I'll show you how I've been able to look and all the words that God spoke I've marked it and I used to get up in the morning and read at least a psalm minimum and once I finish chapter 150 then I'll start all over again and then again I'll read the Gospels then I'll go after that in the night and read at least one chapter of the book of Proverbs. You can see how God has spoken. This happened many years ago. This was a Bible that my dad actually got and he had a lot of such Bibles. And I carried it even to church every Sunday morning. Though it is heavy, actually you can do a workout on with this Bible, I think it's a few kilos. You can lift it up and get your arms strong. That's how heavy it is. But I did not find it heavy. I did not find it cumbersome. I did not find this Bible to be difficult to carry and walk around. You can see my dad's uh, signature. His name is here. Whenever he gets a book or a Bible, he write the date. So here you can see that it is something that was got on 39-1994. So I liked it. So he gave it to me and son. From that time onwards, I've been having it. Every Sunday, I used to bring it to church. I used to, at the time, bring the drum kit also. So, we'll bring it from my home, load up all of that, and still also carry the Bible that was heavy like this. And even when I went to the Bible college in Singapore with my wife, I carried this and went there. And one of the church members there looked at me carrying this Bible each and every day and using it and I do not know what he thought. His name is Desmond. He went and bought me a small comfortable Bible that I normally carry. That's the Bible that he gifted to me in Singapore and I started using both of it and when my wife was also looking at it and she was asking about it, I said, you should also get the same exact Bible and so at the time of marriage, she also got one like this and she's also still reading this. It's at home. Every day, we get together and read it in the night. God is a God who speaks and he's been speaking through all the various books and all the various authors who've written it. And he has shaped and molded and blessed my life. And even in this time when people all around are shaken, I can tell you, my God has been faithful. The last one year, He has been with me. His words have strengthened me and encouraged me. His power has come at times of need and He has removed every weakness. He has removed every sickness. He has healed me. He has delivered me. He has set me free because His word is true and I spent time reading it as much as I can many times over within just one year because I knew that this is the word of God and God spoke to me I remember right from the book of Matthew and the Gospels which I used to read all the principles of my life all the values the way I should have my mind my attitudes and the way in which I should function and operate I remember all those words that God spoke and they are still imprinted. They are still there, written in the tablet of my heart by God himself. And that is why situations like this, I am not shaken, I am not afraid. Oh, I know my God, he holds not just this day. He holds me and he holds everyone in my life. Oh, and he will continue to hold each and every one of you connected to me. Oh, all the days of your life, all through your future receive and accept him and be blessed by him but those who reject the word of God will be on shaky ground Jesus himself has told us the things that will take place in Matthew chapter 24 is what we've been seeing for more than a year 
and he has prophesied he has told the things that will take place and because looked at it and we've seen it we know that these things will definitely take place and they are taking place we are living in the days in which the word of god is coming true and therefore we should align our word we should see what jesus has said and we should do the things that he's asked us to do when these things take place and then we will be saved by god's word then we will live by his word this same psalm that we've been seeing psalm chapter 1 tells us what will happen to this person who meditates on the word of god day and night and delights not just in knowing the law of god but in doing you should enjoy doing what god has said it should give you great pleasure to do what god has spoken in his word it should not be a struggle it should not be a fight that is at the beginning stage maybe but as you mature and grow in the lord you should enjoy the things that he has asked you to do you should know how to praise and worship god and enjoy it you should enjoy reading his word you should enjoy being in his presence you should enjoy coming to his house coming to the church at every time we gather for not all times will the church be open even now we can see that this sunday it is not open let us pray and expect and hope and ask god that it will be open those of you who haven't come in a long time tell god oh god when it is open after that i will not stay back at home i will definitely make myself in the house of god every time we gather in your name i will be there that is what is delighting in the law of the lord for jesus himself had a tradition and a habit of being there on the sabbath day in the synagogue you can see throughout the book of psalms and we'll see even in the end how the psalmist david and the others who wrote it they enjoyed being in the presence of god and they were seeking and longing for such a time when they can connect with god and when they can go there and sit there in his house you got to enjoy the presence of god not just on a sunday morning we the church in the last few months have been meeting on a friday and sunday before that we could meet even on a sunday evening at least for the faith and pride drive or even for going out and inviting people and praying for the different places by walking in all the surrounding places but right now we've just had the friday morning service and the sunday morning service think about it if you just come on sunday and skip the friday you're getting only 50 percent of the input that you need to get from god imagine you eat only 50 percent of what you're supposed to eat most people have three meals a day imagine all you're doing is eating one meal a day how you will feel you'll feel weak you will not have enough energy you will struggle through the day and if you continue like that just eating one meal in a day you'll slowly start losing weight and then sometimes you can even fall sick you've got to eat at least three times those people right now nowadays eat every two hours small meals so that they do not load their stomach but if you cut coming to church on a friday 50 percent of your input from god is cut off you will definitely not have the strength that you're supposed to have and it'll be difficult to follow the lord and to have the fullness of god to have the fullness of his power to have the fullness of his presence for this is the way and this is the place that god has set the assembly and the gathering of the saints it cannot be forsaken at any time if there's anyone who's watching who's not part of a bible believing holy spirit led church you've got to find as soon as the gates and the doors are open run there connect there for as you're connected you will receive and here we see in psalm chapter 1 from verse 3 what will happen to those who base their life on the word of god those who delight in doing what god commands and tells us to do the first thing is you will get the best opportunities psalm chapter 1 verse 3 it says he shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water the best place that a tree can be is very close to water because there can be an arid desert but if you send a river through it you can see that very soon trees will start growing on either side and plants will start growing on either side that which looks dry and dead when the water is sent a river is sent or a stream is sent very soon life will start flourishing and growing animals and other things will start coming there and definitely human beings also will want to come and dwell there because there is water there here it speaks about a tree that is by the rivers of water in the hebrew text that is written the word used for rivers is peleg peleg means to split or to divide if you look at it in detail you'll be able to see how the continents were made but here coming back to psalm chapter 1 verse 3 you can see that this tree is kept in a place in which there is a split the stream and this particular river is going and in the middle of this river there is a small little island you can't even call it an island just an enough a small place for this plant this tree to grow so this river goes on either side this plant this tree is covered by water on both sides it's standing right in the middle that's what the word peleg is used here in the hebrew text in the bible so you will get the best place in your life the things that you need to happen god will give you the best that you need to get the best opportunities as you keep his word god will ensure that you get the best in your life the second thing that will take place is your profits will be on time all of us sow and we expect to reap it says here this person who keeps the word of god and delights in keeping the word of god and meditating in a day and night they will bring forth like a tree its fruit in its season every tree has a season in which it bears fruit throughout the year there are different trees that bear different fruits right now is the mango season the trees which during the winter would have not given mangoes right now you can see that they're full of mangoes your life will be a life in which at the right time when things supposed to happen it will happen not only will you get the best opportunities these opportunities will not get delayed at the time when things need to happen every human being has different stages right from the time of birth why in fact even in the mother's womb every trimester every week there is development and the doctors check to see if the baby is developing and all these different organs are forming and how the limbs are forming and they look at the improvement in the physical form of the baby every other day they know this has to happen and after the baby is born they look for all these markers when is the baby able to turn around when is the baby able to sit when is the baby able to grow the teeth when is the baby able to walk when they are able to speak fluently and run all these are the markers and those who follow the word of god and delight in keeping his law the bible says your prophets will be on time you've given unto the lord and i was encouraging you to give unto the poor the bible says those who give to the poor lend unto the lord and god will repay each and every one of you when you give to the poor when you give to the poor it is like as if giving to the lord himself and when you are giving expect things to come back into your life give with faith do things with faith unto the lord when you read the word of god have faith saying it will change your life when you're praising and worshiping god have faith knowing that god will bless you when you come to the house of god when you come to the church have faith that god will speak that god will touch you that god will transform your life when you pray have faith that things will take place and they will if you delight in him at the right time you will get your profits you will get what you need in your life what you're expecting your increase your promotion and new door and new opportunity 
but you've got to know the word of god and understand it and keep it and delight in it the third thing that will take place in the life of those who live by god's word is you will be unaffected by the world situation how much we need that word of strength at this time to be unaffected by the situation in this nation in this world psalm 1 verse 3 it says whose leaf also shall not wither the leaves will not fall down when the leaves dry up and they fall down many trees go through seasons and in the winter they fall and they just the bark and some of the stem that are there and some of the twigs that might be there and look like as if the tree is dead only when the spring time comes they again put out leaves but here this tree this person who keeps and delights in the law of god and the word of god they will be unaffected they will always be like a tree which does not shed its leaf at any season all times having life flowing at all times there is water at all times there is nutrients that are needed that tree is taken care of like the tree that is right in the middle of this perennial river where the water never runs dry in the same way god will ensure that you need the things in your life and that you always are steady you've got to come to that place not have just ups and downs when you start following the lord when you start out in your life after you finish your education you might have ups and downs you learn things and you have success at a season and success maybe in a year and then suddenly drops down but god is having a place in which when you enter there there is a path which you take there is a life if you have it and it is inside of you that zoe life no matter what happens in the world you'll always have life in you you'll always be steady and firm you'll never run dry you'll have the finances that you need at all times to steadily increase a steady growth pattern in your life is needed and the word of god and jesus and all that he's given are enough so that you can steadily keep growing and going higher and higher and higher be unaffected by the world situation by receiving and living by the word of god the fourth and the final thing the word of god says is that you will be successful in anything you do this is awesome it doesn't say you'll be prosperous in certain things it says whatever he does shall prosper it doesn't say you've got to find what you will prosper in and then you can settle there and then you'll be prosperous that's what certain people give counsel saying you got to find what you will be good at and do that's how maybe you can start in certain things but when you come to that point where you delight in the lord delight in keeping in his word and you're meditating on it day and night you can do anything whatever you put your hand to it'll prosper whatever project you take on it'll be accomplished and it'll be successful any business anything any endeavor that you take it will be successful hallelujah isn't that wonderful this is something that people of the world will want to know how can i prosper in anything that i do this is the secret that the people of the world are seeking many are looking to be successful in different things this psalm tells us how to be successful the three things that we should not do and what we need to do just one thing meditate on the law of god day and night and delight in doing what his word says for as you read chapter by chapter and book by book god will speak to you and you will know how your life is in accordance with what god is saying here so if there is something in your life that is not what god wants you to do according to his word then you'll remove it and there is something that god says that a man should do then you will adopt it and do it just like how you were able to see this morning that you go to meditate on the law of god at all times day and night 
You've heard this now. If you have never heard it till now, then from this day onwards, grab the Bible. Read it, keep it besides you. You've got to carry your Bible. I heard someone say many years ago, if you carry the word, the word will carry you. If you carry the word of God, God will carry you and see you through. Yes, nowadays we have all the gadgets that we can load the Bible in. I've got it on all the phones or apps and computer, everything that is there. But still, I like to carry the word of God because I can mark it. Though it is something that I got in 1994, what God spoke to me is clearly marked here. And I know that God spoke in this particular verse on this particular time and how it has blessed me this is a testament and this is like a diary also so that when I'm shaken up I can open it and see God spoke to me even now I can go page by page and all those words that I've underlined they will touch me again and they will bless me again but imagine I'd put this on an app in 1994 where will that phone be I don't know whether the battery will still be working and we can lose all that information so you get a bible and mark it and keep it and read it do not be finding it difficult to carry it around you got to keep it in your hand and you got to use it at all times this is what i wanted to share with you so that you would be prosperous in whatever you do so that you would get the best opportunities at all times the best position the best places the best things that are on offer and you will be able to get your profit on time and you'll be unaffected by the world's situation how wonderful god is he has revealed through this unto each and every one of us that there is a place i want to tell you my brother my sister i want to tell you young and old ladies and gentlemen i want to let you know this morning in this chaotic situation that we are living in in these last days even as this age of the world is coming to an end when there are many questions and many are shaken up when many wonder what will happen to humanity what will happen to the future what will happen to my job what will happen to my income what about all these things that I dreamt about? Looks like they've all crumbled. Yes, it is a very sad situation. Many people have lost their jobs. Many people have lost their loved ones. They're going through a tough time and many are struggling even right now. India reached a peak in the entire world. 3.2 lakh people being infected on, I think, Monday or so in this beginning of the week and almost 2,000 plus people dying from what is happening people are even afraid about what if I get it in the midst of all these questions what I want to let you know is that there is a place that there is a way there is a life there is a power there is an answer there is a love and there is a rest which God and his word alone can give. Jesus says that you've got to find it in Ephesians chapter 3. It says that when you receive what God has given, he will give unto you the things that you need. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 14, the word which Jesus says is there is a narrow gate but you got to find it Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 if you see it says enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it oh the way of the world is like a broad way where the gate is wide everyone does certain things based on what the others do 
and when you do the things that they do you adopt and follow their counsel their lifestyle and do the things they do then you're accepted then you become part of them you go with the flow you're swimming downstream and it just carries you and you're going but jesus says but that leads to destruction and there are many who are going by it dear brother in christ dear sister in christ this is the time for you to connect with god this is the time for you to pick up the bible this is the time for you to pray this is the time you need god more than at any other time this is the time to spend in the presence of god as much as you can rededicate recommit these are the last days therefore be serious in this time know what god wants you to do and do it it'll be difficult when you have to reject the counsel of the ungodly reject the lifestyle of sinners reject the company of mockers when they mock god and mock the word of god you cannot be with them that's why it says sit not stay not in the company just because you like their company if you stay there they will speak certain things which are against the word of god and you will know that that is not right what they're saying so if you are a true child of god you've got to reject it you've got to be able to open your mouth and say no what you're saying is not right according to the word of god and when you say that a fight can happen a contention can take place an argument can take place and when an argument takes place and they're completely wrong and you basing your statement on the word of god there will not be an agreement you cannot compromise on the laws of god murder is murder does not matter what when someone has killed someone it is murder you cannot at once say oh, okay it is all right just in this particular situation like that there are many situations you cannot accept at all when it is wrong and so your company will be broken your friendship with that particular group will be broken and you must be willing to sacrifice that that's why jesus says here enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life there is a way that leads to life if you call yourself a christian and you are right now confused about the future you're confused about your life you're confused about your physical state or if you're afraid then you need to go to that place you need to find that place for jesus has said in verse 14 matthew chapter 7 find it there are few who find it not everyone can find it doesn't mean that it is not available all of us have the same bible all of us have the same god all of us are given the same 24 hours what do we do with the time that is given each and every day we all have the same sun we all have the same moon god let the rain come on the wicked and on the good he makes the sun shine on everybody and all over the world we've got to use what is given to us you've got to spend time and when you spend time you will find the way you will find the place you'll find the life you'll find the answer you will find that love and you will find that rest jesus himself came and gave himself as a gift to us and after that also he gave gifts ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 says he gave gifts to men what are these gifts ephesians 4 verse 11 it says he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors some teachers why did he give them he gave them as gifts so that they will equip the saints for the work of the ministry just sitting by yourself and reading the bible will not be enough you can be a research scholar and you might be able to find out things by analyzing and observing and researching all that is good but the bible is not something that you can just use your mind to and get everything out of it it was written by the inspiration of the holy spirit this is the only book that when you read the author will be with you for he is the holy spirit and he will open your eyes you need divine supernatural revelation to know what god has mentioned here not only will this word make sense in your mind god has to make that word be imprinted in your heart he will write it 
in your heart and when it is written you will not be shaken that word will stand will stay in you forever and that is why jesus gave gifts to these people they have that supernatural ability to be able to take the word of god and make it something that will touch your life that will bless you that will encourage you that will strengthen you that will transform you faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god you got to be in that place where that anointed preaching is done where you can receive that word of god with the power of the holy spirit and then your faith will be built up that is why god gave these people why did he give them let us continue reading ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 it says so that all will come to the unity of the faith you need faith in these days more than at any other time and the knowledge of the son of god you've got to know for sure whom you're following you've got to know who jesus christ is not just from someone else saying but something that is imprinted in your heart in your spirit and god will use all this so that you will come to that unity to be a perfect man see that verse 13 ephesians chapter 4 god wants you to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that is awesome to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ just like how jesus christ was god wants you to be perfect to that same measure to that same stature so that you will be similar in the ways in which jesus operated and functioned how he was not shaken he didn't weep and cry at the cross for himself when the people of that nation women gathered and wept for him he said do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children he was sure he didn't run away when they came to capture him he said i am and he stood there and they took him and he went there and he did what he needed to do he was in the worst situation any man could ever have been and god wants you to have that same strength so you become like jesus christ isn't that what we want to take place in our life and for that we've got to see and accept what god has given to us so that we will not be tossed to and fro like children verse 14 it says that you should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting verse 16 it says for from the whole body we are the body of christ from the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love we are all together as a body of christ and we need to be joined together knit together you can look at a piece of cloth that you're wearing see how the threads are knit together they are knit so tightly that you cannot see through they knit so tightly that it becomes like a single piece of cloth but actually if you see it is all different threads but they are so united and when they united what happens the joints supply what is needed you got to be connected with the anointing of god so that you can receive from god with the people whom god has appointed in his church for they are the ones who are the vessels who have been place to pour out into your life according to the effective working by which every part does its share you've got a part in the house of god it is not just for those who are into full time ministry you got to do something but each and every one of you have got a part and you've got to do what you're supposed to do causes growth and when you're joined together and when you are in unity and when you do your part then there will be growth you will grow have no doubt about it you'll be different from what you were last year you'll be more stronger you'll be more courageous you'll be more bold you'll be more blessed you'll be more prosperous you will have increase oh god wants you to grow in all areas of your life hallelujah for what you sow is what you reap the bible is very clear second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 says he who sows 
sparingly will also reap sparingly but he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully the time that you spend here he's telling about how you've got to take effort and it is the effort that gives the correct profit in every part and area of your life not just in finances but the time that you spend with the word of god the more time you spend the more you will receive if you're a farmer and you've been given a hundred acres of farmland you've got to sow according to that when they give you a hundred acres of farmland and you just go with a handful of seed and you throw just them just a bunch of seeds and the rest of it you sell you use it for yourself in ways that you want or you just find it too difficult to use and you're saying oh it's hard work to go walk down this hundred acres and sow the seed then when the time for the harvest comes when the time for the reaping comes what you've sown is what will be the ones that will come you cannot just throw a bunch of handful of seeds and expect hundred trucks full of grain what you sow is what you'll reap the time that you spend in the word of god the time that you spend in the house of god will have an effect in this life and in the life to come you've got to spend time in his presence praising and worshiping him have no doubt i've always told you and i repeat and tell again every word of praise will have its reward every act of praise just a lifting up of hands just a clapping of hands just a standing all of that everything you do for god the people in this world might not know it or recognize it or accept it but i tell you one day you will be rewarded for it and expect the reward to come even in this life not just in the next galatians 6 7 says do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he also shall reap because we live in a time where people ask questions oh i've tried this i've done this no god is not mocked do not be deceived by the statements of the world by the lifestyle of the people of the world by those who are not totally committed to the lord totally committed to the word of god if you take a lump of dough to bake a bread you got to put it in the oven and you got to know and wait till the entire lump gets baked completely you cannot take it halfway down out of the oven and try to eat it only half of it will be baked that's what it says here do not be deceived god is mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap you cannot have spent time with god you cannot have read his word you cannot have given unto god you cannot have done things for god and not get back from him his word is true it will remain true forever and whatever you do you will receive a reward for it jesus says that you got to strive and enter and find this place in luke chapter 13 verse 24 strive to enter through that narrow gate for many i say to you will seek to enter and will not be able many will seek to enter but they will not be able because they tried a little bit but they did not strive striving is giving all your strength pressing through not giving up till you are able to find it not giving up in a few days not giving up in a few weeks not even giving up in a few years you press on you press on you press on till you enter that place till you find that life till you get that answer oh till you get that hope till you get that joy till you get that word from god you've got to strive you've got to struggle at times in life because once you make that breakthrough i tell you after that you'll start making breakthroughs in your life the first one might be difficult but you keep pressing on i want to encourage you i want each and every one of you to find that place i want each and every one of you to find that way where you walk and you're progressing i want each and every one of you to find that life that god can give i want each and every one to find that power yes the power of god maybe in the coming weeks we'll see about each and every one of these that i said in detail so that you'll understand and know how to find that place how to find that way how to find that life how to have that power how to get an answer how to find that love how to find that rest but when you do it your life will be changed you will no more be the same 
you will be steady you will be firm and you will be unshaken by the things of the world oh even this morning let us look unto the lord jesus christ oh let us close our eyes and let us set our focus on him oh thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit for your word thank you god for you've shown us the way you've given us the counsel you've written it and given it to us oh lord thank you for you have the power thank you god for you have that place where we can be safe when nothing can come and affect us you are the way oh jesus you have the answer you have that power we go there and we receive that power and then there is a complete change you have the love that will heal every brokenness oh pray that each and every one here would find it a rest oh lord from all the pressures of the world whether people of the world and the devil and the kingdom of darkness try to make people run to and fro searching for this and that being restless and having no sleep and having worry and anxiety leading into all kinds of physical ailments and even to depression and completely being broken down but you have a rest for you are the prince of peace oh give each and every one here oh lord for listening to this the peace that they need even this morning touch them bless them transform them oh i challenge you i encourage you to find that place to find that way to find that life to find that power to find that answer oh press on and strive ask god open your mouth and say here i am oh lord lead me oh may your will be done oh in the lives of each and everyone watching here oh lord jesus pray that oh lord you'll bless and lead and guide can you to cover them with your blood and your name oh lord jesus and we thank you for your word oh pray that you'll meet every need let there be abundance and overflowing and even this morning in the mighty name of jesus oh the power and the authority that you've given oh lord oh i take this rightful place that you've given me oh and in your mighty name lord jesus i come against the devil principalities and powers all the rulers of darkness all the hosts of wickedness every evil every unclean spirit trying to operate against anyone who's watching against every member of the church against the church of jesus christ against the city against all oh, the state of tamil nadu against this nation of india and this entire world and the kingdom of god and destroy every weapon every scheme every device every strategy every plan of the devil against all of these crush and annihilate and trample it in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name oh be set free in jesus name i crush and trample and destroy in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name oh clap your hands I shout with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you going to read Psalm 91? As we conclude this, it says in verse 2, I will say of the Lord in Psalm chapter 91, verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and and my fortress my god in him i will trust what and we rededicate ourselves on each and every one of you repeat this as loud as you can with all the conviction join along and say i will say of the lord jesus christ he is my refuge he is my fortress he is my god and in him i will trust hallelujah Let us read this psalm for it see it reveals to us right in verse 1 that secret place of the most high what will happen to those who are there in the secret place
they will abide under the shadow they will not just be there on and off or visit or at sometimes they can be there no they will abide they will dwell under the shadow of the almighty what a blessed place that is let us read this psalm with faith this is a psalm of warfare so let us read this with faith let us read this with strength oh like as if you're on the battlefield and you're facing the enemy and you've got to confess in faith and you've got to oh say it out with all the strength and the energy with joy with great expectation with great hope oh rejoicing celebrating oh from verse 1 psalm 91 let us all read together he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near you your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me therefore i will deliver him i will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation oh clap your hands god bless you see you very soon stay connected we call up or message or look for the messages that we'll send week by week we'll take it as it comes and i believe that very soon we'll be able to meet maybe we will able to have a friday morning service maybe you'll meet on a saturday morning maybe from 8 to 10 oh connect back with me and let me know about your timings and all the things that are taking place and how we can get together and get back to the house of god and being the church god bless you